Hey, it's Norm from Tested. I'm here with Frank Ippolito, an effects artist here in LA, and Will. And uh, Halloween's coming up, um, and while we had the opportunity, uh, we wanted to maybe show people how they could do some makeup effects on their own. If they wanted to, for example, give themselves a scar. So Frank, uh, Hollywood grade makeup, what do you have here? Well, I have a variety of little things that are pretty easy to get. This is a product from Smooth On called Skin Tight, which is basically an AB silicone. And when you say AB silicone, that means there are two parts and then it, you mix them together. Yeah, once you mix the two liquids together, then they turn solid and it's right. just a solid rubber. So that's, gonna, that's the silicone that's gonna make up the basis of your scar? Yeah. Okay. And then I have a bunch of different kinds of paint. There's this stuff, which is brand new. I just got it. It's from a company called Endura and it's like an airbrushable makeup. Then there's this other stuff called Skin Illustrator, and this is a small little starter palette that you can get. And I have a variety of different brushes and tools, a little bit of 99% alcohol, which is important to use for these kind of paints. So if I'm walking into a craft store and I don't have any brushes or mm -hmm. any of the spatulas, how many do I need to buy? What's a good size to buy? I just need it for Halloween. These two are probably the most used brushes that I'll use out of my kit. Awesome, and then like you said before, uh, the silicone and the paint, they come in quantities that are single use or just a couple times, you don't need to buy a batch. Smooth On sent me this kit, which is a, a larger kit, but you can get little um, little trial kits, like real small ones that, for just doing you know, one-offs. Awesome, well let's give Will a scar and let's get started. Cool. All right, so what's the first step? You have so this your is, Smooth On AB. Yeah, this is the silicone, so I wanna kinda estimate the same amount of both A and B into this little cup. And how much do you think you might need uh, for something like a scar? You know, you don't need very much. This is a little bit of pigment that'll give it some flesh tone. Ah, some color. So there's some flesh tone, and then this stuff, which is called 5X, which will make it the right consistency so that I can sculpt the little wound onto Will. Now, if I just wanted to buy the Smooth On, is that going to be enough? Do you need that pigment color? Do you need the... You can buy all of this in one little kit. All right, so step two is applying the silicone mix to Will's forehead. And you put um, a generous amount on his head and it's kind of spread it out so it doesn't look like it sticks too far out from his head, right? Yes. And, and now you're smoothing it out with uh, a, a brush? Yes, yeah, a, a little fan brush and a little bit of 99% um, alcohol just to kind of help the brush glide over the silicone and not make it all um, streaky. So Frank, how long do you have for the silicone to apply it before it starts to harden? Uh, the silicone, you have a couple of minutes, so you have plenty of time to really work with it and, uh, and fiddle around. It goes through a couple different stages of kind of curing and setting up. So right now it's kind of in a gooey phase. And so when it's at the right consistency, how soft should it be? Uh, you should still be able to kind of poke at it and it still should be a little bit sticky, but not fully set. So now that the silicone is kind of set, you're sculpting the, uh, the scar. Yeah. And uh, you've had experience doing this before, but should people look at photos of scars? Like how should they design their scar? The, I always say that the best thing to do is to use reference. If you want to make a wound or a scar, it's probably best to copy something that's already been done or something that's even real, even though they're kind of gross. Um, so that way, uh, you're not just making it up off the top of your head the first couple times you do it, and you're getting used to the anatomy and the way that skin kind of moves and buckles and, and what the colors are. So if, if you can kind of see, it's a little bit shiny, and I want to get rid of that shininess on the silicone, so I'm using a little powder puff and this is basically just powdered sugar. And what that does is it gives a slight little bit of texture to the, uh, to the silicone. And because it's powdered sugar, with just a little bit of water, you can just rinse it off. And, uh, and it just leaves that little bit of texture in there. Okay, so you have the basic design down. Now it's time for painting. Uh, what kind of, kind of paints are you using and how much do you apply? I'm starting off with Skin Illustrator. My favorite color for matching skin tones when you're doing stuff like this is a light mauve from, uh, from this Skin Illustrator palette. And when you're painting with this stuff, you want to paint in light washes, kind of like watercolor, because you need to layer up all the colors to match 
what's going on underneath. This stuff that I put on him, it's a tiny bit too opaque and it's, and it's a little bit too olive for his skin tone. But the first thing you want to typically do is put the reds back into it. You can already see just a little bit how this is, just by putting these light mauve reds into there, it's already starting to bring it into a flesh tone. Here you want to make it look like it's kind of bruised a little bit and you know, when you get wounds like this, like your skin gets kind of red. The thing that I think a lot of people miss when, when you're doing um, prosthetic makeup or things that are supposed to look realistic is that your skin tone isn't one color. You can kind of see I'm kind of jumping around between some mauvey reds and some corally reds and some greens and, um, and I'm, I'm painting very impressionistically because your skin's really blotchy. If you look at the palm of your hand, hey man. Everybody's skin. Look at the look <laughs> at the palm kidding. of your hand, and you can see the the breakup of color, all the little speckles, and that's um that's the kind of breakup of different colors that you need to kind of pay attention to. So now I'm adding a little bit of blues into this just to make it a little more bruisey looking. All right, so you kind of matched the skin tone of Will's face, gave it a little bit of bruisiness, a little bit of bruisiness, made it interesting looking. But there's got to be blood. Yeah. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna color the inside of these wounds with a darker kind of um, more brickish colored uh, blood tone. And in terms of blood tones, there are a ton of different shades of red. Yeah. Um, you need to look out for um, what does real blood look like, which goes back to your reference and stuff. A lot of fake bloods that are out there, they'll start to look purple or pink. Um, and I generally try to avoid those. Um, a lot of blood tones have like an irony, orangey yellow undertone. If you like put a little bit of blood on a paper towel or a napkin, chances are you'll see it turns kind of an orangey, irony color underneath. And uh, those are some of the things you want to look for. So it, you don't want it to be too dark, you don't want it to be too bright, not too pink. You don't want it to look like strawberry jelly. And like the skin, it's layers again. Yeah. Everything is kind of layering up stuff. So if you just we just slap a bunch of blood on there. It just it looks like a bunch of blood, and you want to you want to have a little finesse to what you're doing with it. So I'm just adding a little bit of blacks into these deeper wounds just to kind of give them a little bit more depth. When I want to put blood on, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drip a little bit of this like yellowy kind of tone first, and this aids in giving it those realistic undertones because a lot of times when you start painting these blood colors they don't have that so if you put this yellow underneath it'll really help so now i'm using a little bit of a brighter blood which combined with that irony color kind of makes the blood look real nice and juicy okay so that's just kind of a painted on blood but i want to make it gooier and bloodier so i'm just taking a little bit of this paint and i'm kind of flicking it it's like when you get a wound like this you know it's like kind of an impacty wound. You have this little bit of spatter. It makes it look kind of cool. How do you balance the application of painting so you don't feel like you're overdoing anything? You know, that's one of those things that it's gonna come down to practice. Um, a lot of times when you start out, you're gonna to be too heavy handed with blood or you're gonna to be too heavy handed with your coloration and stuff like that. And it's just it just comes down to practice and learning how much or how little you can do to, to kind of get away and make it look really good. All right, so now we're at the last step. More blood. More blood. This is my small bin of blood. I have a variety of different brands. An easy one to get is, a, is it's called My Blood. I don't make it, but that's what the brand is. And it comes in a, in a bunch of different colors. My favorite color is this one. It's Three Kings Red. He made this specifically for that movie Three Kings. Oh, okay. And it's got a really nice, like, meaty blood color. There's also this one called Fleet Street Blood. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's, it's got a really, really good color. This one's my favorite blood of all time. It's, uh, it's a blood that's kind of hard to get here in the US. It's from, from London. It's from a company called Makeup. So well, what's the technique here for uh, applying this viscous, gooey blood? Well, you don't want to go too crazy with blood because then you won't see all the prosthetic that you worked on and stuff like that. Not that you need to showcase it. it. It needs to be a function of what the wound is. You know, still keep it realistic and good and gross, but don't, don't go everywhere with it. All right, Frank, that looks amazing. But Will, you haven't even seen what you look like yet. So let's, let's give Will a peek. You gotta do a bar fight, Will. 
Do you remember? Oh my god. Oh, that's terrible. I don't remember anything, man. <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> Frank, this looks amazing. And the cool thing is, this is all with materials that people can buy online, try at home, get reference material and practice themselves. Mm -hmm. And they can even do this if they didn't want to make a cut for any other type of wound. Yeah, you could, well, it doesn't even have to be wounds. You can use this to build it up and make like zombie prosthetics like we do on Face Off or we do a lot of third, you know, a lot of um, silicone buildup makeups on the show. Uh, so this is exactly how we do it. Awesome. And we'd love to see uh, what people do for Halloween if they decide to do cuts or scars or wounds, you know, post it on our Flickr poll. I'm going to put a link down in the comments right here. And uh, Frank, you'll take a look at them and we might give some stuff away for the best ones. Have a great and safe Halloween. We want to see your makeup untested. Norm, it's Frank. Well, and we'll see you guys next time. I don't think I can wear this to a restaurant. <laughs>